Letter the Sixth of Love and Friendship by Jane Austen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Love and Friendship. Letter the Sixth. Laura to Mary Ann. The noble youth informed us that his name was Lindsay. For particular reasons, however, I shall conceal it under that of Talbot. He told us that he was the son of an English baronet, that his mother had been for many years no more, and that he had a sister of the middle size. My father, he continued, is a mean and mercenary wretch. It is only to such particular friends as this dear party that I would thus betray his failings. Your virtues, my amiable Polydore, addressing himself to my father yours dear claudia and yours my charming laura call on me to repose in you my confidence we bowed my father seduced by the false glare of fortune and the deluding pomp of title insisted on my giving my hand to lady dorothea no never exclaimed i lady dorothea is lovely and engaging i prefer no woman to her but know sir that i scorn to marry her in compliance with your wishes no never shall it be said that i obliged my father we all admired the noble manliness of his reply he continued sir edward was surprised he had perhaps little expected to meet with so spirited an opposition to his will where edward in the name of wonder said he did you pick up this unmeaning gibberish you have been studying novels i suspect i scorned it to answer it would have been beneath my dignity i mounted my horse and followed by my faithful william set forth for my aunts my father's house is situated in bedfordshire my aunts in middlesex and though i flatter myself with being a tolerable proficient in geography I know not how it happened, but I found myself entering this beautiful vale, which I find is in South Wales, when I had expected to have reached my aunt's. After having wandered some time on the banks of the Yuske without knowing which way to go, I began to lament my cruel destiny in the bitterest and most pathetic manner. It was now perfectly dark. Not a single star was there to direct my steps and i know not what might have befallen me had i not at length discerned through the solemn gloom that surrounded me a distant light which as i approached it i discovered to be the cheerful blaze of your fire impelled by the combination of misfortunes under which i laboured namely fear cold and hunger i hesitated not to ask admittance which at length i have gained and now my adorable laura continued he taking my hand when may i hope to receive that reward of all the painful sufferings i have undergone during the course of my attachment to you to which i have ever aspired oh when will you reward me with yourself this instant dear and amiable edward replied i we were immediately united by my father who though he had never taken orders had been bred to the church adieu laura End of Letter the Sixth